only establishing a new standard for yourself. You are establishing a new standard for others as they observe you being excellent. Think about how Jackie Robinson established a new standard and redefined the game of Major League Baseball by demonstrating excellence. Think about that. Think about how Reggie Lewis, if you don't know Reggie Lewis, look him up, how he established a new standard and redefined the game of business by demonstrating excellence. Think about how Oprah Winfrey or Kathy Hughes have established a new standard and redefined the game of media by demonstrating excellence at what they do. Think about how the Peter Nyong'o Think about how Gabby Douglas, think about how Ursula Burns at Xerox have established a new standard for excellence by being excellent at what they do. Excellence, therefore, is not just mandatory for all of you. It is not just mandatory. Excellence is also radical and revolutionary. Now, how is that? Ralph Waldo Emerson said, your actions speak so loudly, I cannot hear what you're saying. Well, similarly, your excellence speaks so loudly or does and will speak so loudly, people will not even be able to hear what you say. Or by comparison, your lack of excellence, your lethargy, your mediocrity, your ratchetness will all speak so loudly that nobody will hear what you're saying. I said it. Don't be ratchet, y'all. That speaks real loud to me. Excellence is therefore the means by which we all become trailblazers. Modern day Jackie Robinsons. Excellence is the means by which we shatter stereotypes of our people and raise expectations for our people. Mediocrity does not do that, only excellence does that. Excellence is the means by which we uphold the sacrifices of others who have sacrificed on our behalf. Solomon Northrup did not survive. Rosa did not stand. Martin did not march. So you could be average. They pass the baton from one to the next, to the next, to the next, to you, so that you can be the best at what you do. Mediocrity does not honor their sacrifice. Only excellence honors their sacrifice. And that's the very premise. It is that very premise, that very thought of excellence being revolutionary that loomed over my head like a, crap, like a cloud on a rainy day that made me pensive like watching an episode of Real Housewives or Basketball Wives, that lingered in the back of my mind like the last 10 minutes of an episode of Scandal <laughs> as I walked onto the stage for the season four finale of The Apprentice in New York City. And let's be clear, I was competing in a game, a reality television game. I worked hard, I played by the rules, I expected to get ahead, I expected to be rewarded, and I was asked, do you want to share the title? And I was insulted. And so in response to that question, when Trump said, Randall, do you want to share? I looked him in the eye to give you my response, because I've been waiting. And I confidently replied, Mr. Trump, this is not the apprentice, this is the apprentice. That is going to be one winner, it's going to be me and only me, and that's how it's going to go down. He said, are you sure? I said, I'm very sure. He said, well, that's how it's going to be. And the message I sent that evening was twofold. By refusing, and I took a lot of heat for that decision, folks. Let me be clear about that. I was told I was a sore winner. I was told that I was selfish. I was told, who do you think you are not sharing the title with that runner-up? Why didn't you do the nice thing, the generous thing? You know, why didn't you share the title? I said, I had a little bit of simple answer. The first answer is, do not cave into pressure to do what is popular at the expense of what is principled. And I stood that night on my principle that I, that I, that I, that I, that I 